Hey guys, it's Jonips here with another Spire Side chat. Today I want to talk to you about armaments. I'm in Ascension 15, Slay the Spire. I play the game for wind streaking, so my opinions here are based on playing the game at the highest difficulty and playing the game for the highest percent chance to win each run. I just wanted to reiterate that because I didn't say it last time and it's been a while since I regularly made these videos, so now that we are on the same page. Um, armaments, I actually, I might have made a video about armaments already. I don't remember doing it, so I don't think I did. And there are all the regular things to say about armaments and it's, it's cool and stuff. Yeah, you upgrade the other cards in your hand. It's great with Sneko Eye because one upgraded armament so upgrades all the cards in your hand and you get a seven card hand so that's really cool it can enable weird strategies um you can exhaust down to a searing blow against the act two boss and use armaments to upgrade until you can kill that act two boss there are a lot of sort of perverse and weird avenues through which you can get armaments i think i talked about that function of it in the searing below video actually rather than the armaments video um i don't think i've made an armaments video the thing i wanted to address today is um armaments is one of my highest win rate ironclad cards i don't think it's generally considered to be that strong a card i only take it in like the first half of the run usually i might take it all the way up until like halfway through act two but usually not that far past and um as far as I can tell from talking to other people about what they think about the game, and this is true like all the time I've been playing the game, as far as I can tell, everybody thinks that armaments is a very high priority upgrade. Um, so you go from gain five block, upgrade a card in your hand for the rest of combat, to upgrade all cards in your hand for the rest of combat. And the really interesting thing to me about armaments is I sort of accepted that um, sort of as common wisdom. I didn't think about it too much. It seemed pretty practical and sensible to me. But the more that I've played the game and the more that I've played armament, the less I've actually the less I've actually been uh, upgrading armaments. The more I've played Ironclad, the less I've been upgrading armaments. This is a card that I'll take uh, at any point in Act 1 pretty much and some of the way through Act 2 even and just be really happy with it unupgraded. Um, the like worst cases for it somewhat i would say you draw it with one defensive card that's well the worst case possible is you draw it in a hand with all upgraded cards and it just is a defense so that sort of sucks but more regularly what i find the card does is that i might draw it with a defend and then i play it upgrade the defend play the defend and effectively i've got an eight block out of armaments or if I wanted more attack, I can upgrade a strike in my hand and play a strike and I've gotten five block and three attack out of the armaments. And those numbers aren't super favorable compared to Iron Wave, but the card is flexible. I can decide whether I want extra block or extra attack out of it, depending on which thing I upgrade. So I'm like generally happy having the card. It's okay. It has some sort of nuanced weird value um if i'm playing a deck that stalls and i have an unupgraded feed in the deck then having one armaments means that i don't have to bother upgrading the feed at a campfire i can just upgrade it with armaments as the fight stalls out for example this is something that's actually come up in a lot of runs where i've had armaments um but the the main thing that you get out of not upgrading armaments is you get to upgrade something else and more and more, as I've been playing Ironclad, I have just been immensely valuing cards like Clothesline, cards like Uppercut. I also... I very much enjoy the Bash upgrade. I think that it is a very, very good upgrade. I evaluate the Bash upgrade as typically in my Ironclad runs during the parts of the run that matter at like the start of the run. It feels like the Bash upgrade is worth somewhere in the vicinity of like 8 to 10 damage, which in terms of getting ready for Act 1 Elites is a really big deal for me. It's not as good against tri Sentries, obviously, but against Gremlin, Nob, and Lagavulin. I feel like I usually get a lot of damage out of Bash. And these 2 cost cards are very valuable upgrades. Um, 2 extra damage and 1 more weak, 2 extra damage and 1 more vulnerable. 
uppercut is like an incredible upgrade. It gets one more weak and one more vulnerable. I've been picking Whirlwind a lot more as Ironclad. This upgrade is very, very important. I've been valuing Whirlwind more and more specifically for how good it is against Gremlin Leader. Um, and it has some value against like Collector, but mostly as I've gotten closer and closer to winning actually every single Ascension 15 run, I'm noticing that, you know, a good chunk of the runs that I still lose are to Gremlin Leader. And so picking up a Whirlwind and Aquan specifically for that has gone up in value for me, and that's a really valuable upgrade. And it's an upgrade, all of these, in fact, are upgrades that I really want the first time that I play the card. Um, getting the two weak and two vulnerable onto an enemy early is very important. With Whirlwind being able to deal eight instead of five ensures that I can actually clear the board of small minions. With Bash, you get the three vulnerable. With Clothesline, getting three weak instead of two weak. All of these things are... They're upgrades which don't even only affect the turn you're playing, but they affect... Um, a couple or three turns from now as well and um, these things are very important I very 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 much value the upgrades and so I've started to prioritize those over armaments because it's been harder and harder to justify upgrading armaments instead of those cards and what I've found is that I actually really like it I play ironclad as a generally pretty intense in your face sort of deck. I don't mean that I go for strength and heavy blades, that's not what I mean. I mean that I like put all the cards that look good into my deck all at once. So my deck starts to starts to fill up. It's got like all the flame barriers, it's got power throughs in there. I'll be taking like speculative feel no pains, all the disarms, I'll be taking like a couple of the attacks for sure, any true grid I see, any shrug it off I see. If I see demon form or limit break or spot weakness or inflame or talicize or reckless charge or anger or like there are so many so many good ironclad cards and I'm so eager to put so many of them into my deck that I just don't find myself skipping all that often with ironclad and my ironclad decks um do start to get up toward like 20 cards um by the end of Act 1, beginnings of Act 2. And when you're adding that many cards to your deck, you do pick up a lot of cards that are very valuable upgrades, very valuable to have upgraded the first time you play them. And so that makes it harder to justify upgrading armaments. Another thing that happens is that when you upgrade armaments, this upgrades all the cards in your hand for the rest of combat, the larger your deck size is and the more effective it is at just bashing its way through the early fights, um, the less likely it is that you'll actually draw these cards that you've upgraded again. So when I used to play Ironclad and had sort of more strict ideas about, oh, these are the good cards and this is the strategy I'm going for, Armaments Plus seemed a lot better because I didn't have as, much, as many cards on my deck, um, which meant that I drew the upgraded cards more and more. But as I've been moving more and more toward getting strong cards in my deck now puts me ahead in fights so so much that i don't need such a focused deck i just need to make sure that i have you know some strategy to deal with every fight in the game um i'm not drawing those upgraded cards again very often and so the armaments plus upgrade well i spend one energy on playing armaments and then like the the best case would be that you've upgraded four other cards in your hand usually Unless you have like a battle trance or something like that, in which case, sure, Armaments Plus is starting to be a little bit better then. Um, but you don't get to play four cards out of your hand. You probably get to play two. Maybe if you're in Act 3, or Act 2 rather, you get to play three. I'm not even bothering talking about Act 3 yet. We'll get to that in a bit. And so you're not benefiting a ton from all of these upgrades. Keep in mind that the armaments upgrade itself doesn't increase your output. So as you go through your deck the first time, you'll play the other card that you upgraded instead of armaments. And that's one upgraded card that you've played that you wouldn't have had upgraded if you had up if you had upgraded armaments. And then you play your turn with armaments, and you play your armaments, and maybe you upgrade another card, and you play another upgraded card. Sure, so you get two upgraded cards out of your first cycle through the deck. If you 
upgrade armaments instead of that other upgraded card, you will typically go through your deck. You play the card that you didn't upgrade, and it isn't as good. You play your armaments, you upgrade all the other cards in your hand, but you only actually get to play two of them. And so again, you're only getting two upgraded cards, really. Armaments was an upgraded card, so sort of you're getting three, but this card gave exactly the same output. And so what happens with armaments not upgraded is that you go through your deck, you play... I'm very much simplifying how many different iterations and stuff there is here, and I hope that's okay with you. I, we could spend a lot of time in a spreadsheet, but I'm simplifying. Like Basically what happens with armaments upgraded with three energy, you're usually going to play basically as many upgraded cards in terms of output as you go through your deck the first time as you would with armaments plus. But the, the tiebreaker here is that we got to choose which those upgraded cards were we got to upgrade them at campfires. We got to make sure that we got an upgraded uppercut instead of an upgraded strike, which we might have gotten with armaments. And so our deck's output overall gets better. And the clincher is that as the run goes on, the more and more comfortable that I'm getting with Ironclad, the less and less I'm having to rest at campfires, the more and more I'm being able to upgrade cards, I'm getting to a point where later on the run one third to half of my deck is upgraded already. And at that point, Armaments Plus isn't actually that valuable. I'm reaching a point in the run where I don't really play my strikes and defends because I'm able to spend my energy on other things. I have enough card draw and enough high cost, high impact cards that, you know, I just play the Uppercut Plus or I play the Flame Barrier Plus instead of playing a strike and a defend. And so that means that the Armaments Plus one, it's not upgrading as many cards in our hand, because a lot of the cards are already upgraded. And two, the cards which it does upgrade are not that valuable. Um, we didn't care that much about upgrading strikes and defense. So in the early game, often for me, I'm finding that armaments is, in terms of opportunity cost, armaments is at least as good as armaments plus would be. Um, I don't think this is true for like Lagavulin fight, maybe. Maybe it's not for Tri Centuries, but I think it's actually especially true for Gremlin Knob because getting the Bash upgrade or the Clothesline upgrade is so important against Gremlin Knob, and playing armaments against Gremlin Knob gives it strength. So maybe that comes out in the wash, I don't know. Um, I think it's generally true for hallway fights that unupgraded armaments and an upgrade on another high impact card is a little bit better in Act 1. Um, yeah, this is just. This is just working better for me. And then as I get into Act 2 and Act 3 and the density of cards in my deck which are upgraded increases, the fact that my armaments is not upgraded becomes less and less relevant. Um, also my deck size is increasing, so I'm not going to be drawing like the strikes that Armaments Plus was upgrading anyway. Um, and and it just it feels good and proper and right. Now I want to reiterate that I'm not saying that upgrading armaments is terrible at all. And if, for example, we get a battle trance early uh, so that we have a lot of cards in hand and we um, are afraid of fighting Lagavulin because we just fought Gremlin Knob and so the hard elite fight that's remaining is Lagavulin, we're not too worried about the tri sentries, um, then yeah, grab the armaments plus. In fact, the armaments plus is good against the tri sentries anyway. If we get a Snekawai off the Act 1 boss, then it's pretty likely that you'll want to grab the Armaments Plus upgrade as well. But in general, the more that I have been playing Ironclad and like the more razor sharp my like the edges that I'm seeking out and the decisions that I'm making to like target very specific weaknesses in my strategy are, the less and less I'm finding that Armaments Plus is actually appealing to me and the more comfortable I am with not upgrading it at all. So I just wanted to say that. I've never had anyone else tell me like, hey, I don't think Armaments is such a great upgrade. So I wanted to get that out there because something that's something that I'm thinking about and I'm having a lot of success with this card, I think. More success than... Um... Yeah, I don't actually know anybody who values armaments as highly as I do at the beginning of Act 1 and Ironclad, I don't think, now that I think about it. I don't know everybody, obviously, but in terms of like my viewers or other streamers that I've watched, I've never seen anybody 
and being like, oh, they like armaments more than me. I really like this card, and I really like what it does as an unupgraded card. Just for a little bit of utility in the deck, it's a good card. You do get to, like, upgrade a defend if you want for the longer fights. You do get that feed upgrade in longer fights. You get to, like, upgrade Fiendfire. You have a card in your deck in case you get Snekoi. You have a card in your deck for if you get more battle trances. You might want to upgrade it there. So there is a lot of potential in the card. But if you don't end up getting to that point where it really makes sense to upgrade it, I'm not I'm not being upset at all with just having an unupgraded armaments in my deck for the entire run, and it's been working well for me. So, that's where I'm at with armaments. Uh, I know that I was going to talk about defect cards, but I really wanted to talk about armaments, and so I did. And I talked about upgrading it for a long time and talked very little about actual fights and anything, and I hope that you enjoyed that. Um, feel free to leave me feedback. I, I just make these videos because I love the game, and sometimes I get really excited and I want to talk about something um, more in depth than I have a chance to talk about it on stream live. So, you know, in general, I'm picking cards which I'm really excited to talk about, and maybe they're not the cards that you think of as like, oh, that's a flashy card, I'd love to hear opinions about that, but armaments i don't know so it's a really interesting one i i just i still feel like i'm discovering cool ways that i can um manipulate my deck around the presence of this card to take advantage of certain fights or certain um deck compositions and things like that thanks for tuning in let me know what you thought and i hope to see you tomorrow for another fireside chat bye bye guys